Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. I'm Jordan Kanigi and today we're out here, beautiful summertime, and we're going to go through, and this is more of a conversation piece than a tutorial, but it's something that may help you catch more trout than any tutorial that we do, and it's how to identify where is a good spot or what is a good hole to catch wild trout in streams and rivers. This here is kind of right in between a stream and a river, and we stopped at this first hole to kind of show you guys and explain from up high above the hole why and where you'd want to fish for these trout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around, I'm going to kind of explain to you what the good kind of water is and why those fish are going to be there. So first and foremost, kind of a informational about trout. A lot of these fish are very resident to the area that they're in. They don't migrate very far. They stay within two to three miles of where they're born their entire life. So those fish are really focused on nothing but feeding and, and hiding. The thing that makes them get big and makes them grow the longest is having the best feeding vein possible where they're hidden and they have the most amount of food coming towards them. So what we have behind us is kind of two different styles of water that I would stop and fish if I was trout fishing, whether it be with a spoon, spinner, fly, or, or anything else. What we have behind me here, and I'm going to start with first, is this fast riffly water. A lot of times this is where you're going to find the highest density of trout is in this fast moving broken up water and the reason for that is is there's the most amount of room for those fish. Each one of those boulders as they come through this fast water can hold a fish or has room for a fish to live and eat and hide. That broken surface of that water and that white water is what's going to allow those fish to stay hidden and that nice moving current is what's going to allow that food and those bugs and nymphs or flies to come down towards those fish and they're going to be able to move, grab and go right back to their hiding spot. So fast, riffly, quick moving water is one that I'm always going to start with. It's really kind of the atypical and the most popular style of trout fishing that you can find is fast, riffly water. What we have just below that fast riffly water is more of an atypical, what you call a hole or a pool. That's always going to be a spot also that I fish when I go looking for these trout. And a lot of times it'll hold some of the biggest trout. It might not be the highest density because that water is slow moving and there's only so many holding pockets for those fish. So as we look down below me, we see how this river comes down, this creek dumps down, fast water slot, and it dumps into this nice eight to 10 foot slow moving pool. What I would usually do is if I'm fly fishing or if I'm, I'm spinner fishing is I'd come down, I either start at the very bottom of the pool or I'd start at the very top. A lot of times you don't want to start right in the middle and start right where the fish are going to be. You want to either work your way from behind them up towards them because these fish have great eyesight and they're always going to be looking out for you. So we're going to start from the bottom and we're either going to work our way straight up or we're going to start at the very top and work our way down depending on what style of fishing you're doing. If you're gear fishing, if you're throwing a spinner, you might want to start at the top and work down. If you're fly fishing, you're going to want to start at the bottom and work up so that you have a good casting distance to be able to get in front of those fish. So this drops down into this nice slow moving pool. I'm going to use my rod as a little pointer and it starts to drop off right below this little ripple. Where I'm going to start if I'm, when I'm fishing this pool is right at the top. That broken water and that, that jagged surface of that water is what's going to allow those fish to hide. And then you start to see a foam line get created along that far bank. That's mainly what you're going to look for a lot. A lot of times in trout videos and trout movies and, and trout tutorials or even when you're out with a guide, they always will preach the foam is home. You want to find that foam line because that's where the main density of the current is coming, AE, that's where the main amount of food is getting washed towards those fish. So again, find those hiding spots, find those foam lines, and stick to those and change up your tactics as you're going into these holes. This hole slowly drops off into a nice big deep pool, and then it slowly tails out into a shallow tail out. I'm always going to start in one kind of water and work my way all the way through. But each style of fishery and each style of, of spot, you're going to fish a little bit differently. You're either going to let yourself get down farther or you're going to be fishing a very short pocket or you're going to be do, fishing a very deep pool, which you can see more of examples of by watching some of our other tutorials that we have on addicted fishing. And it shows you how to really break down and fish each spot, whether it be with a spinner, a spoon or a fly or even bait. So this is one style, two styles a hole really that I have behind me here. We're going to keep moving down and we're going to keep showing you guys a few different areas that you'd want to look for these trout. So stay tuned. So now what we have behind us is really kind of our third style of water. Really I'd say there's like four to five different kinds of water you're going to look for when looking for wild trout. And mainly that has to do off of the kind of river you're fishing, the style of water, and then the amount of structure that you have. And the structure is kind of the point I'm going to make on this third style. And what we have behind us is a very structure oriented hole. It's not a big one, it's not fast moving, it's not that deep, but it has a ton of structure and that structure being wood. 
The other kind of structure can be boulders, it can be ledges, it can be basalt or, or clay or anything that allows those fish to really hide and have good pursuit angles on their food. So what we have behind us here is a very structural hole. And why I say that is because it's a huge log jam, obviously. All these, I mean, underneath this pile of logs, there could be a hundred trout sitting if they wanted. And what's happening is all this water is coming down through this narrow slot. There's a lot of brush, there's a lot of grass, and there's a lot of different overhanging natural elements that are, are gonna allow those bugs to come out of the water, hatch, and then fall off of, which those fish are gonna be looking for. So we have this nice steady current coming down, breaks into a nice foam line, and that whole foam line piles right into this log jam. And this is kind of the main structure I'm gonna look for. If I can't find boulders, if I can't find any kind of rocks or ledges, I'm gonna look for natural wood or anything along those lines. So water type number three is something that has a ton of, of natural elements and a lot of structure. So keep that in mind. We're gonna keep moving down river and show you guys a couple other spots. All right, everybody. So now what we have behind us is our fourth and probably most obvious style of hole that you're gonna look for when looking for wild trout. What we have really is kind of self-explanatory. If you're any kind of fisherman or have ever done this before, you're gonna be able to kind of tell that this is gonna be some of the prime water you're gonna to wanna to look for. What I would call this is more of like a boulder field or a, a pocket water style of hole. We have a nice, really shallow, riffly headwater coming down through rapids, again, breaking up the surface and carrying those bugs out of that fast water into the slow water. And this isn't necessarily even much of slow water, but what it is, is very broken surface with good depth. So we have a nice little back eddy on our far side. All this current comes down and meets right in the middle. And you see how obvious this foam line is. You can tell that the river is about four to six to eight feet deep all the way through and filled with big giant boulders. The beauty of those big giant boulders is that it creates cover for those fish, as well as that broken water surface that allows those fish to come close to the surface without an osprey or an eagle or some kind of animal or some kind of bird, some kind of Aryan predator coming down and grabbing those fish when they can see them so easily. So what we have, again, is this nice steady current immediately fishing this foam line, or creating this foam line, which is gonna add all that extra feeding lane for those fish, whether they're on the left side, right side, or right under that current seam, all the way out to the tail out. And this hole kind of carries its depth all the way to the end. So this is probably one of your more atypical and one of your more obvious spots that you're always gonna wanna stop when you're looking for trout water on any kind of given creek or stream. A lot of times you find holes like this on rivers that don't have a lot of deep water. They'll be riffly, riffly fast, rapid, rapid, and then a nice bouldery pocket like this. So this is where you're gonna to wanna to focus a lot of your efforts, and it's really gonna be where you wanna key in with most kind of methods, whether it be spoon, spinner, fly, or bait. This is really my favorite kind of water to fish. So stay tuned, we really got one more kind of spot to show you guys. We're gonna go over five different styles of water. But now that we've gotten this far, be sure and go and comment below, you guys. Tell me what you think I'm missing. I wanna know whether you think certain kind of water holds trout better than others, or if we've missed something along the river here today. So we're showing you the best. We're showing you all, everything we know. So stay tuned. We got one more spot to show you guys. We're gonna take you down here and show you. All right, everybody. So now for our fifth and final style of water that I'm always gonna hit when I'm looking for these wild trout in small creeks and streams is what we have behind us. And it's where two confluence of two creeks come together and a drop pool type of a hole. Again, this is kind of like the first hole we showed you. This has two good examples of, of styles of hole all in one. So what we have here is we have a creek coming in from the left and we have a creek coming in from the right. Both of these tributaries come out and go into big different canyons. They also have a ton of trout habitat going up them themselves. But what happens here is they all come down and they meet and join in what we would call a drop pool style of a hole. You can see how this is a little bit different than most of what we showed you guys today. It's very deep at the top, it's very deep in the middle, and it's shallow in the tail out. The beauty of a hole like this is what you'll find is, is some of the best fishing and some of the nicest trout you'll find will be at these confluences of these creeks during times of year when these fish are going to be spawning. Be sure to check your regulations on where you're fishing because some of these areas like this may be closed. Some may be some of the best kept secrets on the river. So finding those areas where there's two creeks that confluence together and make a big deep drop pool or drop pool hole is really always gonna be one of my favorite types of holes to look for when I'm looking for wild trout. So I hope a lot of this stuff helped you guys today. Keep all this in mind. Every little spot that we fish today is a spot where you can successfully catch trout, whether it be on a spoon, spinner, bait, or a fly. Another part that I'll kind of add on to this is be very versatile when you fish this water. Sometimes using a fly will outfish a spinner every time, nine times out of 10 in the hole. 
during certain times of the year. So be sure to check in your regulations, check into the local fisheries, and really look to see what kind of trout you have in your local area. And when you do know that, go and find these pools like we've showed you guys today, and go on and have some fun going to catch these fish. One more thing I'm gonna add, we showed you guys a lot on what kind of pools today. Be sure to go to our page, Addicted Fishing, and while you're doing it, subscribe to the channel down here, just on this side, and hit this bell notification, because in our other tutorials, we go through and actually show you how to fish different methods in all these different kind of holes. So there's a lot of information there for you guys that you don't want to miss out on. So thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure and comment below with whether or not you even like coming out here and catching these fish. It's one of my very favorite things to do when it's hot and in the summertime like this. It gets you away from the heat, it gets you up on these beautiful rivers, and it lets you feel something shake on the end of your line. So thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. Be sure to like, be sure to share this out there so everybody can see it. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you guys out there on the river.